All right, great. Uh, so let's get comfortable and start our, our experience. And if any of you are new to yoga, just trust that this is a really good class to start yoga with. Uh, I call my yoga practical yoga, and I studied a couple of different styles of yoga, uh, some of which were deeply spiritual and very esoteric. Uh, but what I found in those were they were in fact more practical and applicable to my workday job than Hatha yoga, where it's just postures and a workout. So I started folding in uh, these different uh, elements into my life, and my life began to shift for the better, a, a lot better. Uh, so uh, we had this great idea uh, and pitched a TV show, and I uh, was fortunate enough to produce and host a television show back in the early 2000s called Guru To Go on Fit TV. And we were able to bring yoga off the mountaintop and into everyday people's lives. And so after that, we partnered with uh, everydayhealth.com uh, to put out a newsletter. Some of you may uh, have been on that newsletter list called Yoga for Everybody. It has been my intention to continually help you turn back to your inner life and your spirit so that you can shift that boat by at least one degree and head to a far better shore than you would had, have headed to if you did not shift your thinking. So welcome aboard. And if you're just coming on board, uh, my name is Will Donnelly. This is Will's Practical Yoga. And we're doing sunrise yoga in Hawaii on Thursday mornings, 6 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, 9 o'clock West Coast and noon on the East Coast. And I want to welcome each of you. And if you're new to this, please leave me a note. Tell me which city you're from and maybe what you love most about yoga. And if I haven't seen you in a while, send a big hug. I'll be uh, reviewing all this later. So coming into a comfortable posture, uh, if you have a yoga mat, lay it down. If you have a towel, maybe that can uh, be uh, your cushion. Uh, we'll come into this comfortable posture and let's get started with the yoga. So closing down your eyes and taking a couple of deep breaths through the nose down to the lower abdomen and just using the breath to help you center into this beautiful moment. If you are settling in, hopefully you're uh, environment is quiet enough, I want you to really tune into the sounds that you're hearing through this uh, broadcast, the birds. The birds here are profoundly beautiful, and I feel like they're super happy today. <laughs> There's just no humans to get in their way, and they're just like flying around and having a great morning. So we're going to take the inspiration from the birds and just really tune into our joy. So as you're sitting, I want you to begin to imagine that there's an invisible string at the very top of your head, pulling upward, lengthening your spine upward, resetting the skeletal body. And as you do that, soften all the muscles of your body consciously. So the shoulders relax down, the arms hang heavily, and the face softens, the jaw releases. As we take this time to consciously turn our attention from being externally focused in the world, to being internally focused for our practice. So first and foremost, as we sit down to practice yoga, just noticing what is, both on the external and internal level. So first, notice the world around you. Feel the earth underneath you, whether it's hardwood flooring or carpeting or a yoga mat. See if you can feel the air on your skin and notice its temperature. Next, become aware of all the many different sounds around you, both loud and subtle. And finally, notice the light through your eyelids as the sun makes its way across the sky to light our way for the day. Just noticing where you are and what time it is. And now take this mindfulness inward and Simply notice your breathing. So really feel your inhales and really feel your exhales. And scan your body for what it is that you have brought to the yoga with you today, both on the physical level with your bones and muscles, and also on the energetic level with your mind and your emotions. And in this simple space of sitting with a tall spine, breathing mindfully and simply noticing what is, we're going to set our intention for our class together. This is an important step in yoga since we work both body and mind. So as you scan your body and just notice what is, I want you to ask yourself, did you come to this class for more of a physical workout for your bones and muscles or more of an energetic and spiritual lift or some dance of the two? 
See if you can zero in on what's most important for you today. It might be the physical portion, or it might be the energetic portion. If it is the physical portion, if you've come just for a good muscle building, strength building workout, I want you to begin to visualize yourself later today feeling really incredibly good physically from the work that you're about to do. Your body feels good and clear, your mind is clear. And if you've come more for an energetic and spiritual lift and adjustment, I want you to feel this wonderful feeling of feeling fit and really wonderful in your body, but also with an added feeling of feeling really filled with a sense of creative possibilities, like anything good is possible. We're gonna see if we can hold this image of ourselves in the future in full receipt of the gift that we're about, of the gift from the work that we're about to do and see if we can stay emotionally connected to this image in our mind's eye as if it were actually happening right now. This is called feeling the future now, planting the seeds for the future. So let's give that a try. We're gonna see if we can hold this image in our mind's eye of us in the future and stay emotionally connected to it as if it were actually happening right now. And we're just gonna breathe for the next couple of breaths as we do this. Good. Now, if you had an image in your mind's eye and any emotional connection to that image, I want you to just let it all go and come back to simply following your breath. Really feel your inhales and really feel your exhales. Good. All right. Perfect. Now, let's bring our hands together and rub. So, generating some good heat and friction and energy in the hands. It is said that what we do with our hands, we do from our hearts. And so right now we're cultivating some good old fashioned compassion from the heart chakra so that we're kind to ourselves during our physical workout. This is step number one in yoga is do no harm. And so we're just generating some good heat, rub the fingertips and the pinkies and the thumbs, wake up the meridians. This helps us cultivate a sense of balance and pull your thumbs into the sternum. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. And exhale. Another deep and powerful inhale through the nose. And exhale. And now just breathing naturally. So we're going to take this time to consciously tune into our higher consciousness and call our wisdom forward. And we're going to do this by borrowing from the ancient Sanskrit tradition of using sound as a form of therapy to help us realize the power of the present moment. And the sound that we'll use this morning is the simple sound of Om, said by the yogis to be the sound of the constant hum of the universe itself. We'll use it to tune into the flow of this beautiful universe and find our spot in all of it. So let's take a nice deep inhale for a long and gentle Om. Oh. And take a deep inhale and hold the breath up. Sip in as much air as you can into the lungs, then squeeze up at the root lock or the pelvic floor muscles. Bring your chin down, let this powerful energy rise up and consciously call your wisdom forward. And exhale. Keeping your eyes closed, let your hands come down into your lap. And before you open your eyes, just spend a moment noticing. Notice whether you've been able to make any shift in your nervous system by using your breath, the sound of your own voice, and the intention of your mind and heart. And then as you're ready, slowly and gently open your eyes. It is so fantastic to welcome you here. I mean, first of all, I say every time I teach this class, I always think we are the luckiest people in the world to be right here. And energetically, you are astral projecting off your couch and living room into this beautiful environment of Hawaii. And if there has been a place that has been the most healing in my life, it is certainly Hawaii because nature is so powerful. If we take care of nature and let it do its thing, it will take care of us. 
And so we learned that just being in nature kind of writes our energetic body and we just come back to feeling like, ah, oh, I feel great again. I'm gonna do one quick check uh, production-wise, make sure everything is running smoothly, and then we'll begin the physical portion of class. So welcome everybody. And uh, if, if you're just getting here, I want you to just uh, really feel welcome. And if I haven't met you before, please do leave a comment. Just say hello, tell me what city you're from, and maybe what you uh, love uh, about uh, class. And also, I'm getting a note that something's not working. Can you leave another note, uh, or do I have to reset? I think I might have to reset. So what I'm going to do, because it says it's not playing the video, I am going to end the video and start a new one. So just hang on, kids, and we're going to... Oh, it's all good. Kathy's telling me it's all good. I don't have video here, so you can see uh, uh, video. If you guys can see the video, let me know, and I'll just keep going uh, without having to reset. There's so many little things. Okay, great. Thanks, Catherine and Kathy for all good. And Julie, you can see. Okay, good. Great. Let's get started. All right. So if you're just tuning in, I am Will Donnelly, and this is Will's Practical Yoga, Sunrise Yoga in Hawaii. This is so exciting to be able to share this with you. Um, and as we begin, I want to share a little story. Now, yoga, uh, as we talked about a little just briefly uh, or before we tuned in, um, yoga is a very powerful practice. And I want to say this. Um, there's a story that I like to share. It's in my book. I wrote a book years ago. I partnered with spiritualityhealth.com and blogged and essayed for them for about three years. I would have students after class say, you know what you said at the beginning of class? Do you have that written down? And I'd say, no, I kind of channel that stuff and I don't re really remember exactly what I said. But uh, I, so finally I started writing it all down for this spiritual spiritualityhealth.com blog. Uh, when I ended that relationship, I wanted to put it all together in a book so that students could really have access to these ideas. And one of them is called The Song of Michelangelo. And as you know, Michelangelo was a beautiful and amazing artist, the Italian artist. He actually was so brilliant, he could go into any field and really master it. Uh, as we know, he did beautiful works like the Sistine Chapel. He was a sculptor and did works like the Pieta. If you've ever seen it in person, it'll make you probably cry. It's so beautiful. And of course, the world famous David, the large, huge uh, sculptor of David. Now, in terms of the story of David, Michelangelo was a very interesting artist. And he uh, would personally oversee all the excavations from Carrera, which was the, uh, the marble mine field, the marble uh, quarry uh, in Italy. And then he would personally oversee getting it back to his studio. When it arrived there, as you can imagine, it was this huge, massive rock that was filthy dirty. And to the naked eye, you would think that's pretty ugly. What's it doing in the studio, right? Uh, but to an artist, he could see something in there. Now, what's most important about this story and most compelling is that he didn't, as an artist, he didn't say to himself, I am brilliant and I am going to create the David. He would close his eyes and basically meditate on it. And he would see what God or the universe or the infinite has already designed in it as perfection. And then he saw it not as his job to create David, but to reveal the David, to reveal the Pieta, to reveal the beauty within that messy clump of marble. And this is a profound shift when we think about it. He didn't use his ego to accomplish it. He used his heart and his intuition to say there is already the perfect David in this huge ugly slab of marble. And it is my task not to make the David happen, but to reveal the David. So his task was to reveal all the elements that did not belong there so that the David or the Pieta could be seen. Now that's pretty incredible. And I equate that to the yoga journey. I really do see yogis, uh, people who practice yoga, people who do personal work as personal artists. We are artisans of our own life. And it is our task to do what Michelangelo has done. To, we look at the human spirit and it is easy to look at the outside and say, what a mess, this is a mess. Uh, but the reality is uh, that we are much like that slab of marble. And inside the human spirit is an incredible radiance. When people come to my class here, they'll be 
floored at the beauty. But I always say there is nothing as beautiful, nothing can be compared to the beauty of the human heart when it's at its best. And that's our goal today is to unearth this beauty so that we can head out into this complicated world and bring our light forward. So recognizing that all of us have this wonderful opportunity. Now, what are our tools? And we don't use the pickaxe to, to reveal the David. We use our mindfulness, our breath, our ability to focus. When we say, oh, I have low self-esteem and I don't feel good about myself, we do the work carefully and delicately and kindly so that we can have more self-esteem and believe in ourselves. We, uh, if we have uh, really horrible thoughts about other people at work and we just don't like them, we mindfully pull back from there and carefully, gently cultivate a different thought. And in doing so, we are the artisans of our own lives. And truly the, the awake spiritual beings on this planet, when you're around them, you can feel it. Because our truth, our spirit body is our truth and truth is irresistible. And when we're in it, we are irresistible. It is a magnetic quality because people love to be around this truth. So as we uh, have begun the yoga by starting our brain and being engaged, let's get engaged in the physical portion and start the physical yoga. All right, great. So let us begin. Are you ready to begin some wonderful yoga? Now, this is for those of you who uh, maybe haven't done yoga with me. This is a very accessible class. It's mostly mindfulness, stretching, and a gentle flow. All right, so let us begin. Taking your arms out to the sides and up. Nice big inhale up. Reach toward the sky. Exhale, sweep down and clear out. And let's do two more of those breaths. Inhaling up. Nice big breath up. Exhale, sweep down and clear out. And one more time, nice big inhale up, reach toward the sky. Exhale, sweep down and clear out. We'll take our hands in front, interlace the fingers and press the palms out. Drop your shoulders down. Nice tall spine. Close your eyes, just take a breath. And then from here, we're going to take the arms up over the head. Nice big inhale up. Exhale, back down to parallel. And let's do one more time. Nice big breath up. And exhale, back down to parallel. We'll take the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, roll the shoulders up, back and down, straighten the arms into yoga mudra. A nice tall spine, uh, soften the rib cage in, ch chin comes down a bit, and take a nice deep breath. Good, inhale the arms up, nice big breath up. Exhale, bring your right hand down to the side. Now we're gonna do a side stretch, so straight arm, bent elbow, or elbow on the ground. Just keep your sit bones on the ground and find the stretch, reach those left fingertips long, opening up the body. This is called the edge of the posture. This is the most sacred place in all of asana or postures because it really teaches us everything when we learn how to understand the edge of each and every posture. Let's inhale up, nice big breath up. Exhale, switch sides. Now reaching the right fingertips long, opening up the energy of the body along the opposite side, just so you can feel really good today. That is asana's entire purpose. It's so incredible when you think about it. Nice big inhale up, big breath up. Exhale down. We're gonna take our hands behind our back and have your hands land underneath your shoulders. We're gonna come up into a mild back bend. So just lifting your hips up, lift your heart up and out of the hips and then let the head fall back as you're comfortable doing so. Once you're in this back bend, I want you to squeeze the root lock or the pelvic floor muscles and send vitality upward toward the heart as you open your heart and chest toward the sky. Just take a few good breaths here. Good, and then coming down to seated. Now from here, we're gonna do a gentle forward fold. So if you have any back issues, just be doubly mindful. Just really listen and don't go further than you need to go. We're gonna lead with the navel center and just slide our hands forward with a flat back as much as possible, as far as we can go forward. When you can go no further, just let your head relax down and take a few good breaths. Good, walking your hands back up. Now we're gonna switch the cross in our legs so the hips are balanced. So just switching out the cross, we're gonna come right back down into our forward fold. So leading with the navel center, sliding your hands forward, finding the best stretch for your body. Once you're there, just relax your head down and take a few deep breaths. Good, and coming back up to center. Now let's take our legs out in front of us and shake it out. And as a producer, I'm always worried about everything. So, but everything looks like it's going great. So keep sending notes. Let me know how you're doing. 
Let's see here. And we're going to come lying down onto our backs. All right. I really don't know how all this stuff works. All right, I'm just going to trust. All right, so let's bring our knees into our chest. Wrap your arms around your shins. Tuck your nose to your knees. Engage your core muscles. We're going to start rolling side to side. So just a little gentle shiatsu pressure for the kidneys and lower back. Just gently waking things up each and every morning as yogis. The key to well-being is making sure that the energy is moving naturally in our bodies. And so it's easy enough to do that a bit every day. And coming back to center, let's hold on to our right knee. Send the left leg down along the mat. Pull your right knee into the chest. Let your head come down to the earth. Take a deep breath into the lower abdomen. On the exhale, let's let the knee start rolling side to side. Just beginning to open up the hip flexors on the right side of the body. And as we begin our physical asana journey, just bringing your mind down into your hips and into your body, how are you doing today? What did you do yesterday? How's it all playing out today? The goal is to just be aware of what we have to work with each and every morning. Let's let this knee roll out to the side at 90 degrees. Both arms go over the top of the head. Nice big inhale and stretch. Fire up the energy on the left side of the body. Just wake it up. And then exhale the arms down. The knee comes back to center. And let's switch sides. So the left leg comes up. Right leg goes down. Pull the knee in. Take a deep breath. On the exhale, let's start moving this knee from side to side. Now just opening up the hip flexors on the left side of the body. Mindfully. And breathing as we do. So it should feel really good to be moving in your body. I want you to be looking for that really good feeling energy all throughout class. And let's let this knee roll out to the side at 90 degrees. Both arms go over the top of the head. Nice big inhale and stretch. Fire up the energy along the right side of the body. Just wake it up. And then exhale the arms down. The knee comes back and both knees come into the chest. We'll just rock gently from side to side. And just keep rocking. Use your abdominal muscles to press down a bit. Great. Okay. Now we're going to do some aerobic heat building. So coming into some bicycles to build some heat. You're going to lift your head to engage your core. Bring your knees bent at 90 degrees over your hips. Now if you have any back issues or just want the extra support, please take your hands underneath your hips. And if you want to go full throttle in this, take your hands side down to the side body, palms facing down. Engage your core, and we're going to start bicycling the legs. Once the legs are going, add the arms, both arms moving up and down rapidly as you breathe powerfully through the nose. So keeping at a nice, steady pace. And keep going. I'm going to come out of the posture, but just keep going until I say... So as you're, as you're exercising, we're waking up uh, the third energy center, the navel center, our core. Now, if you're like me, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and in the 80s, I think it was, you turn, if you turned on the TV in the middle of the night, there'd be like ab commercials every five minutes, and they'd be like an hour long. So apparently, in the West, we really have a lot of love for abs. Uh, what I'd say about that is that it's not a bad thing, as long as it's not an obsession. Uh, it's a good thing. The third energy center, the core, the abdominal area, is considered the third chakra, the third energy center, and it's our center for courage and grit. So keep going, keep your core nice and strong, and keep pedaling those legs. So all 72,000 major nerves or nadis go through this area, so it's a powerful area for us to have tuned in. It's kind of like a second brain. It gives us intuitive sensations and a gut feeling, right? So we're just toning that. And once uh, we wake up the core, uh, the whole body seems to do really well. You've got about 10 more seconds, so really staying steady with your bicycles. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax down. You can have your arms down at your side body or over the top of your head. Just take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, just let it all go. Ah. Just feel your body and just notice what's cooking. All right, let's bring our knees into the chest. We'll rock just a little bit side to side. And you can either roll over to your right side and bring yourself up, 
or if you want, you can roll out your spine a bit, a few times. We're just making our way up to a seated posture. All right, actually, let's come around onto all fours. So you're gonna come into tabletop pose. We'll do a little cat cow. Your hands are directly underneath your shoulders, knees under the hips. Let's do some cat cows. So just rolling the hips forward, drop the belly, lift the heart and head on the inhale. Then on the exhale, reverse the motion, chin to chest, to arc the spine. Use your abdominals to fire out the breath. Just going back and forth a few times. Just becoming aware of the spine and how it feels today. Let's do one more of these. And after you're finished, we'll just end up in neutral. From neutral, let's add a more aerobic heat building exercise. We're gonna do a leg extension cat cow. So you're gonna send your right leg back, inhale your head and leg up, nice big breath. Exhale nose to knees, use your abdominals to really crunch it out. So it's a continual movement. So it's inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Nice steady pace, keep going. I'm just gonna come out and kind of guide over class. So you're going at a nice steady pace, big breath. So as that leg goes back, your head lifts up, take a big breath. On the exhale, the knee comes in, the chin comes down, use your abdominals to fire out the breath. About 80% of the toxins of our body leave through the exhale, so let's make use of that this morning so we feel really clear for our day ahead. Good, just a few more of these. And two, one and let the knee come down. Good work, you guys. Let's sit back on our heels, walk your fingertips forward, stretching the upper body uh, and breathing down into the lower body. And coming back up onto all fours, let's do the other side. So we're gonna send the left leg back, inhale your head and leg up, nice big breath. Exhale nose to knees and crunch it out. Inhale, exhale. Keep going at a nice steady pace, really firing up the core. And if you're just joining us, uh, welcome. If you can't make yoga now, please bookmark this page and do this class anytime. It'll be available on my Will's Practical Yoga uh, Facebook page, which you're uh, free to go to right now and like if you'd like. Uh, yeah, so let's do just a few more rounds. And three, two, and one. Let the knee come down. This time we're gonna sit back on our heels and separate out our knees to the width of a typical yoga mat. Lead with the navel center and we'll come deeper into our forward fold. So just walking your hands out in front of you, dropping the navel center and heart down to the earth and breathing down into the hips. Beautiful, walking your hands back up. And let's come up onto all fours, curl the toes under and come up into down dog. So making your way into down dog, this beautiful sunlight coming up over the sacred mountain of Haleakala over in Maui, powerful. I'm so glad to have you guys here today. All right, so from this down dog position, Let's do a little gentle warm up. Uh, just follow along. We'll do this two or three times. You're going to take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, drop your knees to the earth. Sit back on your heels. Forehead comes down to the ground. Exhale and bow. Inhale, rising up into a back bend. You've got two options here the full back bend with your hands behind you. Lift your hips and heart and breathe. If that's too intense, just come up to your knees, hands to the lower back, kneeling back. Exhale, diving forward with a strong core, land gently in push-up, lower down to Chaturanga and rise up into Cobra, pulling up and out of the hips, soften the buttocks, let the shoulders drop down. Then curl the toes under and come on up into down dog. Good, let's do two more of those. So let's take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, drop your knees to the earth, sit back and bow. Inhale, rising up into the back bend of your choice, either this one or on your knees. Nice big breath, open the energy of the heart. Exhale, diving forward land, gently and push up, lower down, chaturanga. Rise up into cobra, pulling up and out of the hip, and then coming up into down dog. And just kind of walking it out. 
Good, and let's do our final round of warm up. Nice big inhale. Exhale, knees to the earth, sit back and bow. Inhale, rising up into the back bend of your choice. Big, beautiful breath. Exhale, diving forward, landing gently and push up. Lower down, chaturanga. Rise up into cobra. And then come on up into down dog. Good, all right, and just walk it out. And we're gonna bend our knees a bit. Walk your hands backwards to the back of your mat. So you're at forward fold. Take your hands right to your knees, walking your hands up your legs to standing. Just uh, coming into a full salute, taking the arms out to the sides and up to complete the salute. Inhaling up, exhale, hands to heart. Ah, well, we made it to standing. This is always a really good sign, so yay. I'm gonna go check the screen monitor since we're all in production mode on our own. Welcome to everybody. Charlotte, yay, this is so great. Nadia, oh, great. Judy, welcome. So great. Sally, welcome. So many fantastic names and faces. It's so great to have you guys here. All right, we'll continue on. So we're going to do uh, um, variations of Surya Namaskar A. So just coming into your standing Tadasana or standing pose, mountain pose. The most important message for today, I think there's so much that we could spend all weekend talking about standing pose, which sounds so boring, but when you fall in love with yoga, it's not because you all of a sudden kind of go, oh, this is my body and this is how it works. It's really great. And I now know how to take better care of it, which is always good. So um, for today's purposes, just feeling your feet on the ground. Whenever you're feeling out of sorts, which these days is kind of easy to do, uh, I want you to, if you can get outside on green grass, take your shoes off and just plant your feet down on the grass. It's great for the magnetic field, but if you can't get outside, even if it's winter and cold out, take your shoes and socks off and feel the earth underneath you, whether it's carpeting or wood, whatever, and just feel grounded. It gives you a sense of place. And that's what we're doing right now. So feeling your feet coming into your standing pose, let's bring our hands together at the center of the heart. And let's begin our flow sequence. A nice, big, expansive inhale, open your heart for your practice. Exhale the hands down to the base of the spine, bring your shoulder blades together. Inhale, reach up toward the sky, big breath up. Exhale, bring the energy down to the heart. Take the hands down to the sides, out and up, nice big inhale up. Reach toward the sky, exhale into forward fold Uttanasana. Now beginners, you can have your hands on your knees, shins, or we can have our hands on the earth. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step or jump back into plank pose. From here, we're gonna do six push-ups. So if you wanna to come to your knees, please do. Take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, down for one. And up, two, up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six, up, good. Slowly lower down, rise up into cobra. Relax the buttocks, drop the shoulders down. And then come on up into down dog. Good, and just kind of walk it out. All right, we're gonna bring the feet together so the toes touch. You're gonna to send your right foot as high in the sky as you can. You're gonna stack the right hip on top of the left. And when you can go no further, you can bend that knee to open up the hip even more. Keep both hands planted to the ground and lift that knee as high as it'll go and feel the stretch. Working to bring your right heel down to the ground as well. If your knee is bent, straighten the leg. We're gonna let that leg come back down. We're gonna come back into plank pose and come through a vinyasa. So lowering down, rising up into cobra, and coming up into down dog. And let's do the other side. So bring your feet together so the toes touch. Left leg goes high. Bring that right heel down to the ground. Point that left toe as high as it'll go. Try to touch the sky. And when you can go no further, bend that left knee, open up the hips even more. Just feel the stretch. Straighten the leg, and we'll bring this foot back down and come through to plank pose, lower down to chaturanga, rise up into cobra, and then come on up into down dog. Good work, you guys. I can't see you, but I believe it's good. All right, let's get flowing, shall we? So we're gonna step our left foot forward, drop your right knee down to the ground, rise up into a low lunge, angel wing arms. Now this is a back bend, so I really want you to feel the back bend by lifting up at the core, dropping your shoulders down away from the ears. All right, from here, we'll take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, windmill your left arm down, twisting to the left. Once you're in this twist, I want you to lift up at the sternum, drop the shoulders down and reach the fingertips long. 
you are doing great. If you're just arriving into class, I'm Will Donnelly and this is Will's Practical Yoga, Sunrise Yoga in Hawaii. Feel free to join us now or bookmark this link and join us when you uh, have time. We're gonna swing this arm back up into Anjali Asana. Nice big inhale. Exhale, sweep the arms down into Yoga Mudra. Inhale, exhale, and bow forward. As you bow forward, see if you can bring your chin to your chest and gaze upon the navel center. Good, inhaling up, nice big breath up. Exhale the hands down to the earth. Plant your right hand underneath this right shoulder. Straighten out your right leg. Left arm opens up out to the left side in a twist. Firm your right thigh, press into the heel of the front foot, lengthen out through the top of the head to activate the posture and breathe. Good, from here we'll take a nice deep inhale and the exhale, bring your hand to the inside of this foot. Now we're coming into lizard, so if you know it, just come on into it. To get into lizard safely, we're gonna move our left foot out to what would normally be the edge of our yoga mat with the pinky at the edge and the heel about an inch in. Here in class, if you have blocks, we've got three options. Option A is straight arms and you're dropping the heart down so the back knee stays uh, straight and strong. Or you can put your forearms on blocks or you can put your forearms on the ground. So choose one and come on into the posture. Once you are in the posture, I want you to keep that back leg straight and strong. We're still in the heat building phase of class. This is so important, this tapas is heat. And as you're keeping that leg engaged, you're lengthening out through the top of your head. Now, as that heat building is happening, you're also, the inner part of you is softening. So the heart is softening down to the earth, the breath is deep and steady, and the mind is calm. Good. Now, dropping that right knee down to the ground, take your hands underneath your shoulders. We're going to straighten out this front leg, this left leg, square your hips to the leg, and bow forward. Feel the stretch. Good. Now, coming out, we'll step back into down dog. All right, let's do the other side. We're gonna step our right foot forward, drop your left knee down to the ground, rise up into a low lunge, angeling arms. Feel the back bend. From here, we'll take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, windmill your right arm down, twisting to the right. Once you're in the twist, I want you to lift up at the sternum, drop the shoulders down and reach the fingertips long. Swing this arm back up, nice big inhale. Exhale, sweep the arms down into yoga mudra. Inhale, exhale, and bow forward. Once again, bringing your chin to your chest, gazing upon the navel center, firing up your core. We're working on balance. Inhale all the way up, nice big breath toward the sky, big breath. Exhale the hands down to the earth. Plant your left hand underneath that left shoulder, straighten out the back left leg, Right arm opens up out to the right side in a twist. Firm your left leg, press into the heel of the front foot, lengthen out through the top of the head to activate the posture. And breathe. You guys are doing great, I can feel it. All right, we're gonna take a nice deep inhale here. On the exhale, bring your hand down to the inside of this foot. We're gonna come into lizard on the opposite side, so moving your foot out at a slight angle to the edge of your mat and coming into one of those three postures. So strong, straight arms, forearms on blocks, or forearms on the ground. Once here, just meditating on the two energies that make yoga yoga, stira and sukhas. Discipline, so the body, the, the muscles, and the activity is the discipline, and the sweetness is your inner life, your breath, your mind is calm and steady. Without both of those present, it's really not yoga, interestingly enough. All right, let's step back into, actually drop the left knee, take your hands underneath your shoulders, and we're gonna straighten out this right leg, reset your hips to the leg, flex the foot, and bow forward, leaning from the navel center. Good, and let's step back into down dog. Great work, you guys. Very nice. Walk it out. You're going to step your left foot forward, then your right, you're back at forward fold at the front of the mat. 
Inhale halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana, long spine, flat back. Exhale, release from the hips, drop the head, let go of what you need to let go of for today, just trust. And then inhale with a flat back, rising up, lifting energy upward. Exhale, hands to heart. Ah, take a breath and just notice. Ah, let's see how we're doing time-wise. All right. Okay, let's go for round two. So just coming back into your Tadasana. <clears throat> and I think for time's sake, we're going to go right to our standing postures today. So coming into your standing posture, bring your hands together at the center of the heart. Well, we'll see. Maybe we'll add a little extra today. And let us begin. Nice big inhale. Open your heart for your practice. Exhale the hands to the base of the spine. Inhale, reach up toward the sky. Exhale, bring some of that beautiful sky energy down to your heart. Take your hands down to the sides, out and up. Nice big inhale up. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Now we're going to go up and down three times for core strength. So uh, flatten the back, engage the core. Let's rise up for one. Big breath up. Exhale, release. Let the head and neck, let it all go on the exhale. And a second time, strong core, lifting energy upward. Exhale, bow, let it go. Be in the flow and trust. And a third time, rising up, breathing up, lifting up. Exhale, bow, let it go, be in the flow. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, step or jump back into plank pose. Here we'll do six more push-ups, so come to your knees if you want to. Take a nice deep inhale, and on the exhale, down for one. Up, two, up, three, up, four, five, and six. Good work, you guys. Let's slowly lower down into Chaturanga. Rise up into Cobra or Up Dog on the tops of your feet. And then come on up into Down Dog. All right, let's do our standing version uh, of lunge. We're going to step our left foot forward and make our way up into a standing lunge. That means we're on the toes of the back foot. Uh, so from here, just nice strong feet, hips, and shoulders. We'll take a nice deep inhale. On the exhale, windmill your left arm down, twisting to the left. Once you're in this twist, I want you to firm the right thigh. Drop your hips down, reach the fingertips long to activate. Good work, you guys. Swing this arm back up, nice big inhale. Inhale, exhale, sweep the arms down into yoga mudra. Now here you've got three options. Stay here, lean forward or bow forward. So choose one, take a nice deep inhale, and on the exhale, either lean forward or bow forward. Remember, if you're bowing, Forward, bring your chin to your chest and try to gaze upon the navel center. Good, and let's rise back up. Nice big breath up. Exhale, dive down. We're going to swim through a vinyasa, which simply means to flow. So we're going to flow down into chaturanga, rise up into cobra or up dog, and then come on up into down dog. Take a breath. Let's do the other side. Making our way up into our standing lunge. Make sure your feet are set. Drop the shoulders down. Take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, windmill your right arm twisting to the right. Lift up at the sternum, drop the shoulders down, firm that left side, drop the hips down, activate the posture. Swing this arm back up into Anjali, nice big inhale. Exhale, sweep down into Yoga Mudra. Inhale, exhale, and bow forward. So you're either leaning or bowing all the way forward. And once again, remember, if you're bowing all the way forward, try to bring your chin to your chest and gaze upon the navel center as we continue working on balance. So important right now, indeed. Good, let's rise up. Nice big inhale up. Exhale, we'll dive down and swim through that vinyasa or just step back into down dog. Take a breath here. Walk it out, let's move the hips. And we're gonna step the right foot forward, then the left. We're back at forward fold at the front of the mat, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha. Exhale, release from the hips, drop the head. Inhale, rise up with a flat back and strong core. Reach toward the sky. Exhale, bring some of that beautiful sky energy down to your hearts. And take a breath. 
Hopefully you're getting nice and sweaty and heated. It's a good thing. All right, let's do our gratitude break. We're gonna take our left hand onto our solar plexus or anywhere on your chest where you can feel your own heartbeat. You're gonna take your right hand on top of your left. Plant your feet down, close your eyes, breathe through the nose down to the lower abdomen and feel the pulse of the life force that you have been gifted with. This truly incredible treasure. It is a treasure and gift that does not last forever. And so our choices along the way make a huge difference in our experiences and our outcomes. So choosing first and foremost today to cultivate a sense of gratitude. And gratitude not only for this amazing moment that we get to share as you're here astral projecting to Hawaii doing this uh, yoga. So not only this gathering, but really for everything in your life that has brought you to where you stand today, your ups and your downs, because truly everything is being sent as a gift from beyond to help us find our wisdom and strength, if we'll let it. So choosing gratitude, cultivating gratitude, it literally rewires our brain, changes the synapse flow, and literally changes everything for us. Because we do not see the world the way it is. We always see the world the way we are. So let's take a nice deep inhale and hold the breath up. And hold two, three, Four, and exhale, let your hands come down to the sides. And just kind of shake it out. Great work, you guys. Now we got one final standing series, so let's do that. If you're sweaty, just keep, keep up as best you can. Uh, so coming to the top of your mat, you'll come into your Tadasana. We're just gonna step back into warrior two. So from Tadasana, you're gonna step your right leg back into warrior two. If you don't know where, to, where the feet should land, uh, then the best uh, way to start this is if you had stripes on your mat, the heels would be on the same stripe. The left knee is over that left heel. If it goes too far beyond, you can strain. So make sure that you never go beyond. And so you can press into that heel and activate the leg. Once your feet are set, you can add the arms. Good. Very nice, you guys. You look beautiful. Let's look to the back hand and stretch the neck. And look to the front hand. Now let's go for our standing flow sequence. Let's turn this left palm up. Inhale into reverse warrior. Nice big breath and stretch. Exhale, bring that elbow down to the knee. Right arm goes long side angle. Now try to have not too much weight on that elbow, maybe none. Use your core to empower this posture. And breathe. Take a nice deep breath right about now. Let's inhale up to reverse warrior once again. Big breath and big stretch. Exhale, you can come down to that same posture if you want more intensity. Take your hand to the outside of the foot, arms straight up from the earth in Vashistasana arms. Firm your back thigh, press into the heel of the front foot as you lengthen out through the top of the head to activate the posture. And breathe. Now from here, you can stay here for another breath or two. If you want to go more intensely, I'd take your hand to your ankle, straighten out that front leg, coming into triangle. Bend that front knee, we'll come into reverse warrior, nice big breath. Exhale into warrior. Now you have the option to come down to either one of those two, elbow on the knee or the hands in Vashistasana, or if you'd like to take the bind, you can join me. We'll take our left arm underneath the thigh, the right arm goes over the top of the hips and see if you can bind them. If you have a, a towel or a, a small you know, a, a strap, you can grab that if you can't reach. And coming into bound side angle. Now, if you're in bounce uh, side angle and really like it, just stay here. If you want a little bit more intensity, you can straighten your front leg into bound triangle versus side angle. If you are in bound triangle, firm both thighs, lengthen out through the top of the head. Lengthen the lower rib cage away from that hip bone and soften the top rib cage down. Good, bending that front knee will come into reverse warrior. Nice big breath. Exhale into warrior. Beautiful job, you guys. Straighten that front leg. Turn the foot so it's parallel to the back leg. Now we're in wide-legged forward fold. Take a deep inhale. Exhale and bow forward. Wide-legged forward fold. You can keep your knees slightly bent. And we're going to rise back up. Nice big inhale up. Exhale, hands to heart. Now we'll come into the same posture on the opposite side simply by turning our right foot to the back of the mat and making our way into warrior on the opposite side. Now let's look to the back hand and stretch the neck. And let's look to the front hand. And let's get cooking. 
We're going to turn this right palm up. Inhale. Side stretch. Reverse warrior. Exhale. Elbow down to the knee. Left arm goes long. Side angle. Just breathe and awaken your body. The more you do this yoga, the more alive you become and the more joyful life is. So just do a little every day. All right, let's come back into reverse warrior. Nice big breath. Exhale, coming down to that same posture, or if you want more intensity, arms in Vashistasana. Remember from here, you can stay here. If you'd like to grab your ankle or just come into a triangle, you can straighten that front leg. All right, bending that front knee, rising up into reverse warrior once again, big breath. Exhale into warrior. Now remember, you can come down to elbow on the knee, uh, arms in Vashistasana, or in our case, we can also take the bind. So we're gonna take our right arm underneath the thigh, the left arm goes over, finding our way into bound side angle. Use your breath. You're doing great, by the way. I can sense it. Now you can stay here and just breathe, or you can straighten your leg into bound triangle for two breaths. All right. Okay, bending that front knee, rising up into our final reverse warrior, big breath. Exhale into warrior. Straighten the front leg, turn the foot so it's parallel to your back leg. Take your hands to your hips. Actually, this time let's take our hands into yoga mudra. Inhale, exhale, and bow forward. Wide-legged forward fold with arms in yoga mudra. Now from here, keep your feet uh, solid on the ground and try to pull the heels together to activate the hips. And let's let our hands come down to the earth. Now we'll get a nice hip stretch in before we close class. Walk your hands over to your left foot and bend your left knee. The first part of this stretch is a wide-legged squat. So both feet solid on the ground, dropping the hips down and lengthening the spine. If this feels really good and you don't want to go any further, stay right here and enjoy the posture. If you want to go deeper, you'll sit on that left heel, straighten out your right leg, and bow forward. And just feel all this delicious heat. This heat is called tapas. It is what cle it cleanses us. It heals us both physically, but also psychologically. So just let this beautiful heat do its work. Really staying connected to your heart with gratitude. And coming back up to center, let's walk our hands over to that right foot. Bend the right knee, lengthen out through the top of the head, drop the hips down. Staying here if that's perfect. If you want to go deeper, sit on the right heel, straighten out the left leg, and bow forward. Just feel your body. Feel this heartbeat, this gift, this treasure that we've all been given. We really can do whatever we want with it, so we should choose wisely. Choose with love and joy. And coming back up to center, keep your knees slightly bent. We're going to rise up for our final salute up to the sky. Nice big breath up. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath and just notice. And as you're noticing, just allow a sense of gratitude. Really acknowledge yourself for this beautiful work you're doing today physically on your physical body but equally or even more importantly on your energetic body, your mind and your emotions, learning how to sail your ship in the midst of a storm. Just knowing that we're heading toward the highest shore we know how to get to, the best shore. All right, and let's walk our feet together. Beautiful work, you guys. Let's come down onto our backs. We'll close class uh, with a little simple stretch and some shavasana. So coming down onto your back, we're just gonna end class today with some simple um, uh, happy baby. So we're gonna, Grab our big toes, reach down between our legs, grab the big toes with the first two fingers of each hand, press into the nail of the big toe with your thumb. It's like an acupressure point for your pituitary. And then we'll make our way into happy baby. The key here is to keep your hips planted on the ground. So if you can't feel your hips, the base of the spine, lift your sternum high to counterbalance. Now, if this is enough of a stretch, stay here and just enjoy this good, really wonderful stretch. If you want to go deeper, you can straighten your legs into full kundalini lotus, or the reclined split. All 
All right. If you're in full Kundalini Lotus, bend the knees. All of us will rock gently side to side one last time. And now making our way down into our Shavasana. Legs go long, hands come down to the side body. Walk your shoulder blades together underneath your heart so you can breathe. Close your eyes and just let it all go. I'm, of course, I'm coming out, but I want you to stay in Shavasana until I uh, reawaken you. And so now just letting everything go. As I always say, if this was just a fitness class, we would take off right now and say, see you next week. But because it's yoga and we work both the physical body and the energetic body, our mind and our emotions, it's absolutely essential that we take time to let it all just softly settle in. And it settles in really not only to the bones and the muscles and the nervous system, which is so good for us, but also to our mind and our emotions, which is key to our healing. So just feeling uh, your aliveness, feel the breath, the heat that you've generated, the sacred heat, this tapas, and just now let it all go. Closing your eyes, trusting. You're being held by Mother Earth. All is well. Just let it all go. Going even deeper into the state of rest and relaxation, soften the face muscles even more, release the jaw. Just feel as though your body is a bar of chocolate softening in some warm sun. Just everything is softening down. Just allow for this healing to occur. And as you're resting, I thought I'd share some inspiration. I think appropriate for this time. I've got two good short quotes. The first is from Charles Darwin. He says, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. And from the writer Agmandino, I will love the light for it shows me the way. Yet I will endure the darkness for it shows me the stars. And I am absolutely con convinced and committed to knowing that this darkness that we're experiencing on this planet is ultimately a gift, and it will be a gift relative to how much we allow it to be a gift. So just knowing that the stars will be shown, the awe will be allowed, and just keeping your heart open and tuned into that energy. And now taking a nice deep and full inhale, really filling your lungs, nice big breath up. And exhale. Ah. And just beginning to wiggle your fingers and toes, roll your wrists and ankles. Just gently bringing yourself back online, healed and ready for the day. If it feels good, do a stretch over the top of your head. Nice big stretch and yawn. Just wake everything up. This beautiful gift of a body we've received. And bringing your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your shins. Let's rock gently side to side one last time. Engage your core muscles, press down onto the earth. One final gentle shiatsu for the kidneys and lower back. And then rolling over to your right side. You're going to use your arm as sort of a pillow. We'll stay there for about two breaths. Our last yin moment in class, just taking in all this beautiful healing. And then using your left arm to bring yourself up to a seated posture where we will all meet and close class as we began it, using sound as a powerful form of therapy to help us realize the power of the present moment. <clears throat> and bring your thumbs into the sternum. Let's inhale for a long ohm. Oh.
Bring your chin down to the level of your heart. Take a nice deep inhale. I want to acknowledge you and say thank you so much for your presence today. It's truly been an honor to sit and share this yoga with you. Namaste and Satnam.